Hey everyone, we're live for NRT Live. My name is Grace Chavez. I'm NRT's uh, news editor and Instagram manager, and I'm so excited because today I'm going to be talking with Michael Boggs. Um, he's co-written songs with artists like Matt Marr and Big Daddy Weave, and I'm going to be talking with him today about his new song that's coming out on Friday, so I'm really excited about that. And I realized this week that um, August 14th marked one year since I started doing uh, NRT Live. So it's been an incredible journey. I just want to say thank you to all the artists and the record labels who have made this happen. Um, it's been a really fun experience, and I see that Michael is in here, and we'll get started. For the one-year NRT Live anniversary, I guess we can call it. <laughs> There we go. Hey, how's it going? Hey, good. How are you doing? Good, thanks. So it's just going to be a quick interview for a new release today. Just want to ask some questions about your new song and stuff. So I'm excited. Perfect. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. So you've been in the music industry for a long time. Um, what has it been like? How'd you get started? Well, I did what every parent wants their kid to do, and that's drop out of college and join a band. <laughs> I was a, a sophomore uh, in college at Bible College and was actually studying to be a preacher um, and got the opportunity to move to Nashville and join a band um, called FFH. And so I remember talking to a few of my uh, friends and advisors at college, and they said that's like the worst idea you can do is to to drop out and, and join a band. But one of my uh, mentors, uh, who's still a mentor of mine today, said, man, I, I think you should do it. And I said, out of all the people I've talked to, you're the only person that said that. I said, why do you think that? And he said, man, you're still going to write sermons. You're just going to be about three and a half minutes long. It's going to have a melody. And uh, some of the best advice I've ever been given, I moved to Nashville at 19, um, traveled with FFH for like the next eight years. Years. Um, and, um, and then uh, one of the guys in our band got sick and had MS. And so we decided to, to shut everything down. And because of that, it gave me opportunities to start pursuing music on my own, leading worship at a place called Kairos in Brentwood, Tennessee, which is a young adult Bible study that uh, has, has been on Tuesday nights for it's my 16th year to be a part of that. Um, and so, um, yeah, I've, I've just, I've had so much fun writing and singing, uh, leading worship, writing for other artists. Um, I've, I've had a chance to experience a lot of, a lot of different blessings. I'm really grateful for it. That's so cool. And yeah, I've heard a lot of artists is interesting. College dropouts seem to make really great artists. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a thing. <laughs> well, I, I, I told my mom I, just recently, I went back to college and, and finished out my uh, my undergrad degree. And I said, I, I can finally make you proud, mom. <laughs> I have my degree now. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and this Friday, you're releasing a new single called Have Mercy. Uh, what's the story behind that song? Yeah, I, I you know, I, there's several reasons I think why I love that just that phrase even have mercy. I think there's several places in scripture where we see people like David crying out for mercy. Uh, we see the parable of the tax collector, um, you know, and and uh, the Pharisee in which the the tax collector cries out for mercy. So that phrase has always been uh, prominent for me. But I just you know re was remembering as a kid the first time I actually heard a confession. Um, was from my dad. I was 12 years old. My parents' marriage was uh, at best rocky. They were separated and headed for divorce. And one morning, my dad came in the back door. My pastor and his wife came in the front door, which, by the way, I didn't even know that my dad knew who our pastor was. <laughs> but they met in the middle of the living room floor. And I remember my dad just saying with a very country accent, he said, Preacher, I've been a sinner, and you can't have a good family when you've been a sinner. And um, and so my dad knelt in the middle of his living room, in the middle of our living room floor and gave his life to Christ. And I, mm -hmm. I just was thinking about just that. That was my dad's version, the Oklahoma version of <laughs> saying, Lord, have mercy on me. Um, but all of a sudden it just realized, man, that there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of, uh, in life, there's a lot of us that, that have a similar story and maybe it's different lyrics, maybe it's different words, but all of us have some sort of confession. All of us have some sort of plea for God's mercy on our life. And so I looked at my co-writer who's Josh Nichols, by the way, is incredible, uh, incredibly talented, um, singer and writer. And I said, I wonder what it would be like if we just like wrote a whole song that was basically a confession song. These are the things that I want to say that I think, um, you know, I, I would need to ask 
God for mercy for. And maybe that might open up the door for other people to, to ask for God's mercy too. And so um, I think one, one of the things that sort of paints a smile on this for me is that I've never seen confession in a, in a negative light. I think sometimes it can have that, but like for my, for my dad's story, he gave his life to Christ. My parents' marriage wasn't perfect, but, um, but it sort of began to heal. And so his confession led to, um, a, a legacy really that he handed down to my sister and I, and hopefully we'll hand down, um, to, to our kids as well. And so I just thought, man, it would be pretty, pretty cool if we could somehow maybe try to start that kind of a trend where we could invite people to confess. And the idea is that actually brings us closer to God. Uh, that's not something that we should, should be afraid of. So we did our best to, to try to do that. And that's what's coming out tomorrow or Friday. That's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. And it's a really beautiful song and I'm excited for people to hear it. Thank you. Yeah. And you also have a music video coming out along with the song. Uh, what was it like filming that? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It's 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 a little bit stressful because like you, you know when it's you're filming an acoustic video, it's everything is kind of stripped down to mm -hmm. at least in our video, it's a piano uh, and acoustic guitar and a vocal. And so um, I think that's when you can really tell if a song is good or not. Um, when you sort of strip all the production away and sort of it's it's, it's just the song and the basic idea. And um, so that's always nervous. And it's always nervous writing a new song and sort of getting it out into the world because it's like a baby. And it's like nobody wants to be told their baby's ugly, you know? And so there's always there's always this sort of uh, love-hate relationship with releasing new songs. But, um, but that video, I think, was a really good opportunity for just me and a couple of my friends that were willing to help um, create that. Again, another way that you can just have this song and sort of push it out to the world and, and say, I don't... I hope maybe somebody else needed this as much as as much as I do, uh, or as much as I did when 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 we wrote it. So it's a fun experience. It's always fun to be in the studio. It's always fun to work with friends that you love, and are um, you know insanely talented. And so I love the idea of collaboration in general. Um, you know, I think it's one of the reasons I've loved songwriting so much. I love playing music with other people. You just get a chance to to witness and participate in their skill uh, as well and their abilities. Um, but then all sort of going toward the same direction, which at least in this case was, was this particular song. And gosh, I'm just so grateful for the people that gave their time to help make it possible. Yeah, that's awesome. And you mentioned how it's kind of stripped down acoustic. And I remember our old church tried doing like an acoustic set for Christmas Eve and it didn't work. <laughs> we kept adding stuff and yeah, acoustic, <laughs> acoustic sets are hard. So yeah, I get that. <laughs> It, it is it, it's 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 um challenging but when it's done when it's done well it's really cool and and a lot of times it can help maybe even show a different side of a song than what you mm -hmm. saw before i can't tell you how many times i go into the youtube you know rabbit hole of like live performances of a person in their guitar a person in a piano um and when it's done well it's just like wow this is I'm a part of something special. I get to witness something special here. So, um, I, you know, who knows if that actually happened in, in the video that we made, but I'm, I'm excited to get a chance to sing it and, and, uh, and play it with my friends. And Have Mercy is the first single you've released in seven years. Uh, what were you doing during that time? Yeah, so um, a couple of different things. One, I teamed up with one of my favorite worship leaders uh, in, in Nashville. Her name's Brooke Voland. And so we worked on a project together called Brook and Boggs. And uh, it was basically a six song EP. And we lead worship together here in Nashville at, at the thing called Kairos, I was saying earlier. And so um, just to have a deep respect for her and our families. Um, we're becoming friends. And so I just was like, in fact, the way I met Brooke was I asked a friend of mine, I said, who's the best worship leader in Nashville? Uh, and he said a name I had never heard before, which was Brooke's name. And, uh, and I thought, well, gosh, I've got to meet, I've got to meet Brooke. And, um, and so I watched her lead a couple of times and I knew exactly what he was saying when he said she was the best. She's so vulnerable and uh, she's got this beautiful, beautiful, powerful voice. Um, but at the same time, she invites you to sing with her. You don't just listen to her. That's kind of a, a unique um, thing. And so 
I just, you know, we started leading together and, and started writing together and just enjoyed it. And so it was something we, uh, we did, a, like I said, an EP and had a chance to travel a little bit with that. Um, and then recently it was a part of something called Wildfire, Wild, Wildfire Collective, Worship Collective. Uh, and we'll be releasing some music too, um, hopefully in the next year. Um, so I've been working on that too. But it just felt like, gosh, like as you said, it's been like seven years since I've released something on my own. And I think we with the way that COVID kind of shut everything down, um, it gave it gave me a little time to think about what I wanted to say. And gosh, if I had a song that I wanted to um, that I wanted to release, what would I even what would I even say? Um, and so it just seemed like, gosh, the first the first song I release is is a confession called "Have Mercy," and that seems about that seems about right for me. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it's a great song, and I'm sure fans are gonna love it. So. Thank you. And speaking of which, is there any new music coming out soon after the single releases? Um, you know, we've been writing a good bit. Um, again, one of the things COVID allowed us to do was uh, was a lot of writing sessions, a lot of those on Zoom. Um, and uh, so we've got some music that we're excited about. I think there could be some new stuff coming out in uh, 2021. And so um, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But I, I, I do have a whole folder full of songs that I'm excited to share with, with the world. And our, like I said, our, our ministry here at Kairos has already got a chance to experience a few of those and uh, we're starting to lead them a little bit um, in our ministry. And so, you know, that's just the process trying to figure out, you know, what, what songs are resonating with people. And sometimes the songs you think, well, gosh, this is really going to resonate with people. It doesn't. And then other songs you think, um, I'm not even sure if this would make the album. That's the song that people end up singing the most. My wife is the most honest person that I know. And she's usually my first line of defense. I play all of my songs for her because, you know, she's, she's very honest and will just tell me a lot of times she sees um, the life of a song more quickly than I do. She'll be like, I, I've been singing this song that you wrote two weeks ago, I'm still singing it in my head. You know, have you done anything with that yet? I'm like, no, that's living in a folder in my computer that I (laughs) probably will never look at again. She's like, you need to look at that again. So she's, she's always really helpful too. So all that to say, uh, we've got some songs I think that we're excited about and, and my wife Keely has given the thumbs up for. So (laughs) (laughs) nice. And you mentioned how a lot of songs came out of the pandemic and stuff. And almost every artist I've interviewed, like when I asked that question, they say how, songs have come out of the pandemic which i think is an awesome testimony and is there anything you want to say about that any of the songs that are coming out that came out of the pandemic yeah i think in general you know it 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 forced it forced creativity you know i have a friend that talks about songwriting and he says that songwriting is um is um, about 10% inspiration and about 90% perspiration <laughs> and, um, and just sort of reminds you of the work that goes into sitting down in a chair, grabbing your guitar or a piano and just asking the Lord what um, he wants you to say that day or, you know, reading through the scriptures and sort of wrestling with ideas. And so I think COVID allowed a lot of songwriters, a lot of artists this time to sit down and actually do that. Um, Which, you know, in a busy schedule, especially for people that travel a lot, if you have a family or you have kids, those those specific moments, they just get shorter and shorter in time. Um, And so, I think what COVID did is it slowed everything down. And so mm-hmm. you got all these, you got all these artists and songwriters and people that, that see the world in a unique and special way. And then can, can maybe turn that around to help somebody else see that same viewpoint or that same idea. I have been excited to hear um, just my friend's songs, you know, I mean, just even work tapes that it's like them singing into their voice memo and their phone. I get a chance to hear a few of those. And I'm like, gosh, this is so good. Everybody needs to hear this, you know? And so I think COVID allowed that. And I, and I think it gave us the chance to sort of, um, you know, for more or less, it gave us a chance to even do a lot of things ourselves. It sort of forced us to say, well, gosh, I wrote this song 
and we can't all get together and, and play a demo. So I'll just create the demo myself and get all your eyes, your ideas down, um, you know, and pro tools are Ableton or whatever it is. And then you kind of hand it to somebody who's really good at what they're do at what they're doing and say, Hey, what do you think about this? And so it, it was a way to, at least for me, it forced me to pour as much as I could into one song and then sort of give that to somebody else to collaborate uh, with. So, you know, one of the songs that, that I think I'm, I'm really excited about, I don't even know if it'll make the record. Um, you know how, you know how it is, but one of the songs is just called help me Jesus. And I was walking out of the door, you know, out the door one day and, and I said, Keely, what should I write about today? I, I got this writing appointment and I'm not sure what to write about. And she was like, Oh, I don't know. And I said, well, what would you write about? She just said, help me Jesus. And I just, as she laughed and was sort of intended to be funny, I just stored that in the back of my brain and brought that to the songwriting session. And that's the title of the song. And I was like, how, how universal of a, of a cry is that, that in one way or another, man, we all, we all need Jesus help when it comes to grace. We're all standing in the same line. You know, most of, most of Christianity and evangelism is, is one beggar telling another beggar where to get bread. And so um, I, I've, I've really, I think the, co you know, as, as difficult and as um, challenging as COVID was, um, for many people, many families and the industry and jobs and all that kind of thing, I, I think it also uh, opened up uh, an environment for artists and songwriters and, and musicians to to sort of dial into what they really want to say, what they really want to do. And because of that, I think artistically our world will be a better place because of that. Yeah, that's great. And it seems like COVID like really stretched people and a lot of creativity came out of that, which is awesome. Yeah, I, I, you know, again, I think there are probably songs that we'll be listening to in the next two to three to four years that came out of this past season um, that are that are going to be world changers. I just uh, I think when enough people get that much time to say, Lord, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to play? What do you want me to write? I just uh, I can't I can't wait to hear all the things that came out of the last season. Me too. And I always do this on every live stream. I have rapid fire questions. Are you ready for these? Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. First one, favorite worship song. Oh, favorite worship song right now. Um, that is a great question. Probably uh, Gyra. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. And just all time favorite song in general. <laughs> oh, that's that's a tough. That is a tough song. Uh, favorite song in general gosh there's there's about 300 songs going through my head right now <laughs> um i i would probably say um um whatever my son's favorite song is at the time that's my favorite right. that's <laughs> whatever he's walking around the house singing that's what i that's what i love to hear the most probably so that works <laughs> <laughs> and favorite book other than the bible yeah, uh, that's easier. Uh, anything Brennan Manning wrote, um, he wrote uh, a book called Abba's Child, also The Wisdom of Tenderness, um, Ruthless Trust, um, Furious Longings of God. Um, I, I, you know, Abba's Child was a book that I read in my early 20s, and it changed my life. Um, the idea is that, um, um, that God loves us as we are, not as we should be, um, was revolutionary to me. And, and uh, I think it was Eugene Peterson's son that told Eugene Peterson, dad, whenever you write a book, you kind of always say the same thing. It's just, <laughs> you use different words to say it. And I think Brennan is a little bit that way too, in the sense of he always wrote about God's love in a way that made it feel fresh and brand new and revolutionary. Um, and so that's not a rapid fire answer, but, um, <laughs> but anything by Brennan Manning would be my, would be my short answer. Nice. I actually have not read any of his books, but I want to, I keep hearing people talk about his stuff. So. Definitely you should. <laughs> and you need a dictionary beside you as well, because he uses okay. words. I'm like, I've never heard that word before. <laughs> Sometimes like I was C.S. Lewis, though, like I'm into his books. So like some of his British slang, like. I yes. <laughs> Another. He would be on the list, too. C.S. Lewis is is brilliant. Mm -hmm, for sure. And name one of your musical inspirations. Um, my, my parents for sure were musical inspirations. My, uh, my mom sang and my dad, um, sang and played guitar. And so I grew up in the family, 
you know, that's Saturday nights. It's like dad got his guitar out and mom was sitting in the chair beside him and my sister would sing harmonies and we're playing these songs. And that time I was pretty young. I played the, I played the drums too. It's what I started out playing. So I would play some version of like pots and pans with pencils at that point. Um, but um, I would say, you know, that, that most of my inspiration came either from them or through them somehow. Um, listen to a lot of, of church music, um, you know, growing up and country music and um, all those kind of things. But I think I always really respected how my dad, he was a songwriter as well. And I think I always respected the idea that he could see, he could see, or he could create something out of nothing. You know, he had like an idea. And then all of a sudden it's like, there, well, there's a chorus and gosh, there's a verse and dad, how did you do that? You know? Um, and so um, I, I, I think I, I look at the world a lot through that, through that lens that he gave me as a songwriter. That's awesome. And uh, favorite food. Ah, favorite food. Um, <laughs> easily steak. I love yeah. steak and it's medium well. And um, I don't know if you've ever had Cavender seasoning or not, but Cavender mm -hmm. seasoning is like a Greek seasoning. It's awesome. Uh, and then there's a restaurant in uh, Oklahoma called Freddy's Steakhouse, and they make a specific type of smoke sauce you can pour on there when you're done. And it is perfect. I've heard of Freddy's. We have one here. I live in Las Vegas, but never been. I've just heard of it, passed by it down the road. But <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing. There's like a Freddy's there's like a Freddy's hamburger chain and they have like custard and stuff. And then there's like a Freddy's steakhouse and, mm -hmm. um, and either one of those is, is great, but the steakhouse is, is amazing. <laughs> nice. And favorite movie. Ah, uh, favorite movie. Um, I would say, uh, I'm so stereotypical with this one, but probably gladiator. Um, it's one of my favorites. Um, uh, specifically the part in the movie where um, where one of the gladiators tells uh, uh, Russell Crowe's character, you have to kill your name before it kills you. Uh, I think that's such a great um, description for, or job description for a worship leader or for anybody that's on a church staff. It's like, mm -hmm. do everything you can to, to get your name out of, out of the picture and get the Lord's name in the picture. So, uh, but I love that movie. It's probably one of my favorites. And, and the notebook. I watched the notebook several times. My wife Hi. is it loves oh, the notebook. Ahead. And she's a four uh on on the Enneagram, so she <laughs> likes uh she likes deep feeling things and, and that is definitely one of those movies. <laughs> yeah, I always tell people like if it's not a Disney movie, it's over my head. We have Disney Plus and that's basically all I watch for movies. So <laughs> I just discovered Disney, honestly, when my son was born. He's four now. Um, but I am all in on Disney movie. I, I like, I just saw Moana for the first time and mm -hmm. I just saw inside out for the first time recently. And even been dating back to like 101 Dalmatians, like the mm -hmm. early version and, and Dumbo and some of those, like it is, <laughs> I'm, I'm all in on Disney too. I think I watch great. it more than my son does. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and favorite Bible verse. Um, as I probably have a couple of them. One of my favorites is Matthew sixteen twenty four. If any man would come after me, would must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Um, I just think that you know that the, the life of a Christian is to some degree summed up in that in that one verse, and um, I, I refer to that. I refer to that often for myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's not a rapid fire question, but how can we be praying for you and your ministry? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, thank you for asking that. Um, you know, I, I think there there are a couple of different prayer requests, and, and most of them um, are related just to family. I want to be a good husband and a good father. Um, and uh, music is a tool in my tool belt, but um, it doesn't define who I am, and I need to be reminded of that on a consistent basis. Um, and so, um, you know, the greatest sermon I'll ever preach uh, it, it is probably to my son and, and to my wife. And so, um, I sure love, um, being a worship leader and a worship pastor in a church, love writing songs and, and, and getting a chance to share those with people. Um, it's one of the great joys of my life. But, um, but if I, if, if I could have anybody say a prayer for me, it'd be that I would be a good husband and a father. Yeah. Well, I'll be praying for you and I'm sure our staff will be too. And it was so great getting to talk with you today. Thank you so much. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, of course. Have a great day. All right. You as well. Bye.